Newton's second law. One. Recall your force lab where you hung different masses from a, uh, uh, a string that went over a pulley and then uh, you pulled on a cart. We did two things there. We hung uh, different amounts of weights uh, and pulled the carts with different weights and different forces. And we also um, put different amounts of weight or mass on the uh, cart. And uh, so recall you're uh, doing your lab and then we'll look at our relationships from that. And after having done your force lab, these are the relationships that we got. Uh, in one case, we varied the mass that we put on the cart, and as the cart got more and more massive, what we noticed was the cart's acceleration decreased. So the greater the mass, the less the acceleration. And we'll look at that in more detail in just a minute. And then the other relationship we got is we hung more mass to apply a greater force to the cart, and as the force increased, pulling on the cart, the acceleration of the cart increased with it. So let's take a closer look at these two relationships. Uh, first of all, we're going to take a look at acceleration versus mass. Obviously, mass is going to have something to do with the amount that we can accelerate something. And the relationship we got there again was that uh, when the mass increased here, uh, and our graph showed the acceleration decreasing. Likewise, if we decrease the mass, we should expect an increase in acceleration. Uh, therefore, we get this relationship right here, which is an inverse variation. So the acceleration is inversely proportional, inversely proportional to the mass. So, uh, in other words, as you can see from the equation here, or the proportionality, as the mass gets bigger and bigger here, one divided by something that's getting bigger, this is then getting smaller. And that's an inverse variation, an inverse relationship for mass and acceleration. So, please take notes on this. So, let's take a look now at our acceleration versus force. And it might be kind of obvious or intuitive that the more force you have available, the more you'll be able to accelerate here. And that's what we found doing our lab as well. The uh, more force we applied by hanging more weight and pulling on the cart more and more, the greater the acceleration was. And so that, see how these arrows are both in the same direction? That's a direct relationship. Likewise, if you decrease the amount of force, then how much you'll accelerate will decrease. And so we get a direct relationship here that acceleration is directly proportional to the applied force. And uh, so please take a note of this relationship. Now that we have our uh, proportions for each of the tests that we did during our force lab, we're going to take these two relationships and we're going to combine them into one relationship. And so we can get rid of the proportionality uh, here. We can make it an equation if we can find out all the pieces to the puzzle. Well, if you can see here, acceleration is inversely proportional to mass, and that still is maintained here. And acceleration is directly proportional to force, and that's maintained in our equation here. So now we don't have to have proportions, we can actually have an equation that combines both of these relationships into one. And that's a very, very powerful equation, one of the most powerful equations in all of physics, and it's known as Newton's second law, A equals F over M. So it should make some sense here that acceleration is dependent on both force and mass. The greater the force, the greater the acceleration, the but the greater the mass for a given force, the less you're going to accelerate that particular object. Now, most people, if you ask them what Newton's second law is, and they, if they knew it, what it is at all, they wouldn't tell you A equals F over M, although this is probably the best form of it as far as dependency is concerned. 
what they would tell you is F equals MA. And how did they get that? Well, if you simply multiply both sides by M here, these M's would cancel and you would get F equals MA. And that's a little bit easier to say. And so this is the equation that most physics teachers or most people uh, in the know with physics, if you said, hey, what's Newton's second law? They'd say F equals MA. Please take a note of all this. So, force. We have a definition for force now and a uh, law for force. Force is measured in Newtons, given a capital N, and uh, it is uh, given uh, the symbol Newtons in honor of Sir Isaac Newton, who cr came up with the second law of motion. And uh, so we can see what the unit is. Mass is kilograms, and acceleration is in meters per second per second. So when you multiply both of those together, you get a kilogram meter per second squared. And this is quite a bit of uh, stuff to carry around. So all of this was condensed into one unit called a Newton. So one Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. That's a very important thing to uh, recognize, so please take a note of it. Place right there as he drives underneath Jerry Coons Jr., who is a lap vehicle in second place is the number three car of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And behind Stenhouse is the machine of Darren Pippen. That's pretty much how they've been. Here we go with another car. Now that we've derived Newton's second law, let's go ahead and put it to practice in uh, this particular problem. So just like the race you just saw, we have an 800 kilogram race car and it can, it can accelerate at 15 meters per second per second. So we wanna know what is the force caused by the engine? What is the force ultimately driving this race car? So uh, we start with our, we've read the problem once, the second time we go through it, we note our knowns. So an 800 kilogram, that's mass, Race car accelerates at 15 meters per second per second. That's our acceleration. And we want to know what the force is. So F equals question mark. Knowing all that, we can draw a conceptual drawing of the uh, race car here. We draw the race car and label its mass, 800 kilograms. And we have two vectors in our illustration. One vector is for acceleration. A equals 15 meters per second squared. And then the other vector is what we're looking for. That is the force vector here. So this is our simple illustration uh, noting what was happening in the problem. Then we do our KUF, our knowns, our unknown and formula here. And our mass is 800 kilograms. Our acceleration is 15 meters per second squared. Our force is what we're after. And F equals MA, Newton's second law. So F equals 800 kilograms times the 15 meters per second squared. We do our plug-ins and we remember our units in that. And 800 times 15 is 12,000 Newtons. Quite a bit of force for this uh, little race car here. Please note how to do these types of problems before we go on. Well, how about our other example problem here? We have a uh, motorcycle, as you just saw, accelerating. But uh, let's read a problem when we posed here. A motorcycle's engine applies a net force of 1,000 newtons. The cycle has a mass of 200 kilograms. What is the acceleration of the motorcycle? And uh, so 1,000 newtons, when you see newtons, you know that's a force. And then we have 200 kilograms, and kilograms is mass. And then we want to know what the acceleration is. Well, acceleration A equals question mark. And we draw our illustration, uh, draw a motorcycle, and we point to it and label its mass, M equals 200 kilograms. The force, the force vector is 1,000 newtons. And then the acceleration vector is what we're trying to find out, A equals question mark. And we do our KUF, our knowns, our unknowns, and our formula. 
Uh, we list our two knowns. Force is 1,000 newtons. Mass is 200 kilograms. Our unknown, A equals question mark. And so A equals something with an F and an N, and we find our equation. Newton's second law again, but just formatted a little differently here. And so A equals 1,000 newtons over 200 kilograms with our plug-ins. And so 1,000 divided by 200 is 5 meters per second squared. And that was our second example. Please note how to do this kind of a problem with this form of Newton's second law. Force is a vector. So force has direction. Uh, acceleration had a direction. In fact, the direction that an object is accelerated in is due to the direction that the force is being applied. So uh, force is a, a vector quantity and uh, so um, please take a note of this idea. Apply a force to a beach ball and what happens? The ball begins to move in the direction of the applied force, accelerating in the direction of the applied force. So since force is a vector, let's look at vector addition of forces and let's look at and a concept a concept called net force a net force is the overall force after adding up all of the forces acting on an object or a system as you just saw the two boys pushing a uh, beach ball and so let's say each of them of course it would be more than this but let's say each of them were pushing on a beach ball with two newtons and they were both pushing in the same direction so the overall force, if I pull one of these vectors off here and put the tail of it on the tip of the other vector, like this, we'd have two newtons and two newtons, both going in the same direction, so they would add together. And this would be the way we would show that algebraically, the F1 plus F2. Since they're both in the same direction here, we can just add them to get our total net force of four newtons. Please copy this information down. Apply a force to a beach ball and what happens? The ball begins to move in the direction of the applied force, accelerating in the direction of the applied force. Applying appropriate forces in the opposite direction can bring the beach ball to rest. If those forces are increased, the ball will accelerate in the backward direction. So let's take a look at what happens with vector addition when we have opposing forces. As you just saw with the two boys pushing the beach ball, they were pushing in one direction, and as soon as a couple other kids started pushing the other direction, when they pushed with an equal force for just a moment in time there, before the other kids uh, came into play also, uh, the two forces were equal. And so, but they were in opposite directions here. So when you add these two force vectors, if I take this two newton force and pull it off and put the tail of it on the tip of this one, it would add back to zero. So F1 plus F2 is negative two newtons plus two newtons is zero newtons. So please copy down how you would do vector addition when you have opposing forces. As in that last example, when we were doing vector addition, the two forces uh, cancel each other out. They're called balanced forces, and the net force was equal to zero. And when we have a situation like that, where the net force is equal to zero, then the acceleration must be equal to zero. Kind of like these next couple of examples. Notice that we can have balanced forces and have a constant speed. The dog's pulling equals the amount of friction on the sled, and we have a constant speed. The acceleration is still zero. And Scratch's parting idea. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.